Before Barca's clash against Cadiz, of course, there's the little matter of Manchester United Ooh. in the Europa League. I tell you what, Barca have been exceptional this season at home. 22 wins out of 26 matches, and they've been scoring goals for fun. Uh, they've only lost one. This is again that was against Real Madrid. This is in La Liga. This is in Spain. Domestic competitions. Obviously, in the Champions League, they've been terrible. Hence, they're in the Europa League. Uh, the front page of sports says um, a European examination to the new Barcelona. Yeah, examines in yes. new Barca. Yeah, that's exactly what I said, pretty well, much. You're all over it. There we are. Get uh, the right no idea. problem then. Waste uh, five years in Spain. Uh, <laughs> Despite Stevie poo-pooing this game, yeah, it, was, it should be brilliant, yeah. shouldn't it? You know, the Europa, with all respect, Europa League normally it's... Yes. It gets to the final in the semis, but generally... you know, yeah. but, uh, but this game... Yeah. You know, Barcelona don't want... Neither of these sides want to be in there. I think Barca just edge it in terms of being favourites, for sure. But United are in a much better position, obviously, this year under 10 high. I've got Rashford still scoring goals for fun. Uh, defensively, they look quite solid as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, it is going to be a, a, a real test of, of both teams, but just edging towards Barcelona because of their form. There's so many little subplots go yeah. going in into this, Ali, the biggest of which is these are two of the most informed teams in Europe at the moment going head-to-head. And I'll take it even a step further. When you think of some of the most productive or informed players, not only in Europe, but in the world, you have to think of Marcus Rashford. When you think of perhaps over the last month or so, the best defensive team in Europe, you don't think Barcelona, but you look at the numbers yeah. and you better start thinking Barcelona. Barcelona, and, and this is a stat that we've thrown around quite often, has only allowed seven goals so far in La Liga. Seven goals in 21 matches. Defensively, this is a different type of team. Usually we think of Barcelona as, as, uh, as a team that has the outside backs getting high up the field. And you'll have that down the left-hand side with Alejandro Valde. You'll have that with Jordi Alba as well, whoever plays. But you don't have it down the right. Jules Koundé plays on that side. He doesn't get forward. And he matches the speed of Marcus Rashford. If he gets beyond Jules Koundé, He's going to go with speed against Ronald Araujo, who has been, in my opinion, the best defender in the Liga. And he is athletic enough to stay with the speed of Marcus Rashford. So you think of Manchester United and what they want to do is get out in transition, perhaps absorb some pressure, get out in transition. Well, this is a different version of Barcelona that actually has addressed those issues of, of transition. That's where I see Barcelona being a favorite because they can do enough in the attack, but they have defended so well that has been impressive. I'm not sure if Veghorst is... I think he's eligible. I'm not sure if he can play or not. I think he can. He's been playing recently. No, but my point is, he shouldn't. I don't think so. Because for, that, for those reasons, you know, Barcelona... Barcelona will obviously try and dominate. Mm. So the one test he got for them is pace. Now, they've handled it, as Ali said, pretty well. But Rashford in behind, yep. Garnacho in behind, whoever it is, the one thing they'll, they, I think... You don't want to can play, by the way. Yeah. The one thing you don't want to give them is just a big guy up front who's not going to run in behind. Right. I think they need people that can run in behind. I think it's per perfect for Rashford and people with pace. That's going to be their only out ball as Barcelona dominate the game. And we'll be interested to see what Ten Hag... Uh, his team selection is. And it's going to be a great atmosphere at the camp now, kind of rejuvenated from what they've seen from Xavi's <clears> side <throat> since the World Cup, Jules. This should be a cracker. It should be amazing, really. So much history as well between the two clubs, of course, Champions League finals. I mean, even one Champions League final that Manchester United won, of course, against Bayern in that STEM stadium. So, so much history, the Frankie de Jong derby. Of course, yeah. for, for all the chase that United had in the summer to try to poach him uh, and then finally staying there and, and doing really well now that the, the four midfielders that Xavi plays now, uh, which really did uh, uh, in, the, in the Super Cup, that has worked so well, I think benefits Frankie so well and so much. And Pedri as well, in the form that he is, we saw the lovely goal that he scored against Villarreal at the weekend. So really, as you said, Great forms for the two teams. The best defence in Europe against maybe the most informed forwards in Europe in Marcus Rashford. It should be great. And let's not forget, there's a second leg to come next yeah. week as well at Old Trafford, which is make as well, you know, those kind of games, you see them twice. It's, it's brilliant.
Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.